Hi, everybody. It's Jill here with Illuminating Women, and it's our Wednesday Coffee Break and Connect. Except for today, we're not going to be drinking coffee. We're going to be drinking tea because we are so excited today to bring to you one of our members, Roberta Fur. Roberta is an expert in good tea, understanding really excellent tea. We have had so much fun in her tea shop in Issaquah. She has such a passion and a drive to educate people around tea. And it goes from generations to from the young to the old to whatever, because tea has something spiritual and special and people can come around and drink tea together. And it just adds an extra spice into your life. In fact, I have got my tea right now. I got, she gets these nice little bags and I have an extra spoon from Kristen Hirano, so it's measured out exactly right. <laughs> I love that, that I could have that. But I love that I have this nice little tea thing, so she's taught me how to do the right kind of tea here. And today I'm gonna to have this lovely yummy ginger and it's a white tea. See, I didn't know, white tea, green tea, black tea, there's all kinds of tea. The other thing that's really special about Roberta is that she's such a woman of heart and passion, and she's a businesswoman. She knows what it's like. She's been through those struggles, and she always comes to the table with such inspiring and beautiful information. I'm so glad this woman is in our community and a part of our membership. She adds so much to us. So without any more, Roberta, <laughs> welcome, and thank you again for agreeing to uh, teach us today about yourself and about tea. So thanks. Um, I'm thrilled to be here and um, very grateful always to be able to share tea with people. I've got mine today. Today, actually, um, I'm drinking an herbal. And that's one of the things that I always like tell people that herbals are actually not tea. So my business is Experience Tea, and I call it Experience Tea Studio. Um, I'm a retail store for tea, but a big part of my business has always been teaching tea. And so much of the time people would come in and say, and I've been in business nine years here, um, they'd say, how do you teach tea? What do you teach? Do you teach people like how to hold their pinky up or <laughs> when they drink tea or, or how to steep it? And actually what I teach is what tea actually is. And I, um, my passion is connecting people with true tea. So um, it's, uh, true tea is white and green and oolong and black and puer. Okay, so some of you may be used to, of course, green tea or black tea. Uh, many people are a little intimidated by oolong, not sure what that is, and then white tea, not sure what that is, and then puer, most people have never even heard of it. But these are all true teas, and they come from one plant. Although I did not bring my little tea plant with me today, I've got a live tea plant um, that's currently out in the sun. Um, behind me here, I have a mural. I don't know if you can see it, but it's um, a mural of Camellia sinensis. And that is actually the tea plant. So that's what I teach. Everything kind of surrounds this plant. So we do tasting um, of white and green, oolong, black, and puer. And I help people understand how those diff very different teas can come from one plant. Um, so it's tasting, but the other thing I like to do is give people a background um, uh, in the history of tea and its origins in China and um, just how it evolved and how it became over four or 500 years as it's permeated into the West how it became the second most widely consumed beverage in the world. When I first started really studying tea, and this wasn't until I was 54 years old, so it's, um, I had a whole career before this, but when I started really studying it and training professionally in it, I was so um, amazed and overwhelmed by how interesting it, it is and how much it brings cultures together, it brings people together, 
um, it's like the one common thing throughout our world that is just, it's not offensive and it's inclusive and it's good for you. I mean, I don't know what else would be like this, but anyway, um, I was really amazed though at how little is known about tea. So that's why I decided when I created my business that I would focus it on teaching tea. But of course that also, because I teach it too, I wanted to sell it. So they go hand in hand. And um, there are many other places you can go, well, not many, but a few other places you can go and actually sit and have tea and be served. But that's not really what I wanted to do for my business. So um, anyway, that gives you a little bit of background in my business. Um, I had a whole corporate career before this. I was in banking for a very long time, <laughs> 27 years. And, you know, as most things, um, it, it came time for me to do something else. And um, so I didn't actually, when I left banking, I didn't really know what I was going to do. And I think it's a good thing for many women um, to know that sometimes you have, to, you have to walk out of one door before the other one opens. And that definitely is what it was for me. But I followed the, the, the small doors that kept opening. It wasn't like one grand entrance, you know, like, this is it. It was more like I'd wake up one day and this door was kind of creeping open a little. And I'm like, I think I'll open that a little further. And then walking through and you go, oh, well, I wonder. And you Google a few things and, and all of a sudden there's other opportunities to learn. And then you, then things just start coming into your life. So that's really how my business evolved. And um, it has been nine years. Um, and, uh, you know, I will say for starting a small business, uh, I learned a lot of lessons and I still continue to learn a lot of lessons. But I love having control over my, um, over my schedule. And, but most of all, I love connecting to all of the people who have um, come in, bought tea, supported my business, um, appreciated what I teach them, have shared their stories. They share their families, but they share their stories about connecting tea with tea with their families. And that is extremely meaningful. Um, and I find that, yes, I love how cool tea is and I love being an expert in it. And that's, you know, that's the, I don't know, gosh, the ego part of me, of course. But I'll tell you, I don't think I would do this business if I wasn't able to connect with my customers. And I remember the first part of the quarantine. I, I'm like a grocery store. So I, filled orders online and um, shipped them out. And then um, didn't have really anybody who wanted to come in and pick up tea. So it was all done online. But I remember going, getting all these orders and that made me really happy. But it was just coming in here, being by myself, <laughs> you know, slinging tea right and left into bags and getting them into boxes and getting them out to people. Um, and I felt like, you know, this is okay for now, but I wouldn't want to do this for a living. So, um, I was very glad when we went into phase one and a half and I did reopen for retail and, um, we're, you know, just like any business, it's masks if you come in and no more than four people and social distancing is emphasized, of course. So, um, you know, it's adapting too. And with, you know, we had this little chat before we started today. Um, with COVID and our quarantine and our phasing, we don't know where this is going totally. I mean, I'm optimistic that we're getting close to um, 
being able to maybe go into our phase three, but who knows? And what ultimate repercussions this will all have on business, um, on lifestyles and all. It's a big unknown for all of us. Um, but anyway, I on that, I'm gonna kind of switch gears a little bit and I'm gonna show you some of my favorite teas. Uh, Jill asked if I would share some fall teas with you. So um, I, I'll just share a few. And I will say that all teas and herbals, and I have over 180 here in the studio, all of them are great. And, and respect your taste buds. Okay, so I can tell you about these teas and they may not be ones you like. So um, the first one I pulled off the shelf is Maple Walnut Green, okay? So I love this because I love maple. And I think fall flavors, I, I, when I think of it, I think of cinnamon and maybe ginger, maple, caramel, apple, apple pie. <laughs> so um, let's see. I, but on that, I think a really good, wonderful green tea blend is Moroccan mint. So this is green tea with peppermint and spearmint. And that is a very nice afternoon hot tea also. Um, but getting back into more of the cinnamon type things, I have an apple cinnamon um, uh, coffee cake black that is very popular and that's quite a fall tea. Uh, there's cinnamon spice and cinnamon spice is that heavy cinnamon oil tea. I, I'm not making it sound very good, but it is um, sweet naturally and um, very, very comforting in the evening. For those people who want a black uh, tea but don't want caffeine or, or want very little caffeine, um, there are decaf blacks and hazel cinnamon, um, uh, I think this is hazelnut cinnamon uh, decaf. This has been quite popular too. Um, on the herbal side, uh, winter spice, this is um, along with holy detox. Those both are um, holy basil, also known as Tulsi, and they're both wonderful for, I think, balancing and well-being um, in the fall. Um, roasted almond fruit is an absolute favorite and probably one of the um, um, most popular teas, or I should say herbals that I sell here. Um, turmeric orange, okay? So this is actually a really pleasant uh, turmeric um, blended tea. So you, it's not overly spicy, and I think the blender did a really good job with a good orange flavor with it. Um, let's see what else we've got apple pie rooibos. Okay, so that's a nice comforting autumn flavor and um, And then caramel caramel rooibos. So this is actually one of my favorites year-round, too um, So anyway, I you know, it's just a smattering of what's here um, but um, I welcome anyone to come in and explore. I'm happy to give a sample to people to take home and try a tea. Um, the last thing I wanna do is ever sell people tea that, that they walk out of here and they really don't, it's not for them or they really don't like. Um, so I'd rather people taste and know and but, you know, at the same time, it is very fun to help them explore, too, and find things that really delight them. Um, I think that's about all, Jill. Is there anything else that you'd like um, me to cover? Yes, yeah, so I was just going to ask. Now, um, if I walk into your tea shop and I would like to maybe try one of the teas, you can quickly fix us a cup of tea so that we can taste it, or is that okay or not? Well, it if... I will tell you that is done um, more on a, as um, it as having time to do it. Yes, I have um, tasted teas with customers many times. Um, if I've got a room full of people, I won't be able to do it. 
the one thing that I will say with my business and how I structured this is I don't have any employees that are, you know, that are full-time employees or even part-time. Um, I have people who help me now and then or cover for me. Um, but um, I'm it pretty much when I'm in the studio. Um, that has definitely been helpful throughout this, the quarantine period. So it's, um, anyway, so yes, I will. Okay, and the other question is, um, we could still do t uh, tasting even on uh, via Zoom if, if yes, we, you know, uh, so tell what does that look like? So I do, um, instead of being able to do my live uh, tea discovery classes, I do my tea discovery classes on Zoom. And um, if you go to my website, experience-t.com, there is a class calendar and there are, um, you can look for uh, different classes that I offer um, in September and October. And I think I have through November posted um, but when people register for classes, I send teas out to you and we taste as we learn. Um, it has been amazing how much I've loved doing that. And I didn't think online teaching was really going to be that satisfying. So, um, and thank you, Lisa. Um, Lisa's put um, a link in the chat for everybody. So, um, I've done um, almost all my classes um, through Zoom now, and um, all of them have gone very well. It, it actually expands what I can do, believe it or not, because although we're not together, um, I keep the classes small, and um, I share PowerPoint pictures from my travels. And that's been really helpful in that when I'm in the studio, I only have so many pictures that I've uh, created and laminated, and I don't tend to use um, video um, equipment in, in my live classes, um, unless it's great big presentations. But um, on Zoom, I do, I have PowerPoint pictures, and I can show a lot more. So I feel like um, it, it's just as interactive. I don't do it as a um, webinar. I do it as a meeting. And I like that. And I don't mute people purposely because I really love to be interrupted. I like the questions as we go. I love that. Um, I, I don't know if you can see my tea bag, but one of the things, if you've got one of your tea bags handy, that you give really good instructions on how to create that tea. Do you have a tea bag, uh, one of these bags that you can show? One of these? Um, I don't have one right here with me, but. Um, yeah. Oh, hold on a second. It's right behind me. Yeah, that's one of the things I love and is, is the fact that it's so easy to create. Yeah, if you could show that and, and bring it up to your camera as close. Yeah, as so um, what I've got on here and the glare may um, preclude you really being able to see, but this is my organic uh, Irish breakfast and you can see I tell people what the tea is, the temperature to steep it at, the length of time to steep it, and whether or not it has caffeine, okay? And I'm amazed how far this can go too. And I like the fact that you say if it's a white, green, or black, or herbal, and, and you're right, the temperature. This is, this is so easy to do. Yeah. And, and, yeah. You know, and I've learned that you have, have, you know, we don't do tea bags. I get that. And, and we probably, you know, that, that's safe for uh, part of your presentation as to why we don't do tea bags. But having a simple something like this has been fantastic and so easy to use. I love it. Yeah, so, good. I'm things. glad. Yeah, I only carry functional things. I will tell you, I'm, I will not sell bad tools and I discourage people from using bad tools. And, and what I know is, is what a gift your tea is, you know, to, to give to somebody, even to have the experienced tea party to have you teach, you know, who do you know, right, that you can give an experience to with a good uh, product. Um, and lastly, I just want to leave it with asking you, because um, I'm a coffee drinker, but I really like to stick with one cup of coffee, and I find that I feel better when I do that and enjoy my tea in the afternoon. And when the, the, the days get cooler, 
you know, just having that cup of tea just does something. And, and the fact that you've got those fall flavors, it just really matches. Good. So, yeah. Um, is there a specific tea? Now holidays will be coming. People are going to be fixing meals. Is there a specific tea that you would recommend to go with uh, the after meal um, for the desserts? Any of that sort of thing? Well, I've served teas after um, get togethers and it, it can vary all over the map. One night I did my front street chai and Lisa knows which one that is. It's a, it has, it's a chai blend that has a smoky character to it. And I had to keep making pot after pot after pot, but everybody loved it and I was shocked. But um, Moroccan mint, I think is a really, I mentioned that earlier, the green tea that's blended with uh, peppermint and spearmint, that makes a wonderful after dinner. Um, gosh, you know, pretty much anything. I, you know, people may be more inclined to want something caffeine free. So, um, you know, it, if you uh, want something interesting with dessert, maybe it would be the roasted almond fruit tea. That might be really good. Um, the winter spice, because of the different, um, it's got a little fruitiness and the spiciness um, from the Tulsi. That would be very nice too. So um, yeah, after dinner, there's lots of options and you lots of options that don't have caffeine. And I just got to say, there is definitely something about drinking that tea and you're just feeling better. And, and it, you're right, there's a personal touch to it. So it's such a win win. Well, yeah. I want to thank you so much for taking time today to teach us a little bit about tea. Uh, we can find you at experiencetea.com and you can learn more about you. We can sign up for a class. We can, you know, order tea. And I just want to remind everybody what a beautiful gift that is. And you're supporting a woman owned business and a small business. And, um, and Roberta's put her time in. And thank you for sharing from the court. Yeah, thank you. This was business. fun. Oh, we always have fun when we're with you. So uh, for the rest of us, we'll just stay on and have a little chat and ask you a few more questions. And I want, again, I want to thank you, Roberta. And um, everybody, enjoy your tea, because yeah, tea, tea is special and so are you. So thank you again. You can learn more about us at illuminatingwomen.com and come check out our YouTube channel where this will be on. Thanks, everybody. And thank you, Roberta. Bye-bye.